Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we will demonstrate predicting blend time in agitated tanks using MSTAR CFD. From this simulation, we are going to predict how a passive dye added to the top surface of a vessel homogenizes across the fluid. We will be characterizing the blend time by examining the concentration at various probe locations throughout the vessel, as well as the global coefficient of variation across the fluid. In addition to blend time, we will quantify the time evolution of the shaft power draw and the corresponding steady state impeller power number. We'll start off by creating a static body and making it a tank cylindrical. We'll make end one flat. We'll set the diameter and length to 0.5 meters and the baffle width to 0.05 meters. If we right click the parent name static body and change the name to walls, that'll make things easier going forward. Then we'll create a moving body and add a Rushton impeller. We'll change the impeller diameter to 0.166 meters and the shaft to 0.5 meters. Then we can right click the parent named moving body and change that to impeller as well for simplicity. We'll select the impeller object and select the translate option which will allow us to move it up to this location. The impeller speed is set to 60 RPM although it is editable and it can be a user defined function. Now we'll go ahead and create a scalar. Add a primitive cylinder. Make the cylinder diameter 0.01 meters with a length of 0.01 as well. Let's right click and rename to die for simplicity again. If we select the translate command again, we can drag the die child to a point near the top surface, somewhere between the baffles. And we'll set the scalar child geometry value to 1. This is the concentration of the die injected into the child geometry. And we'll set the scalar injection time span to impulse. The die will be instantaneously added to the child geometry at the user defined impulse injection time. We're going to be setting the injection impulse time to 5 seconds. Again, this is the time that the die will be added to the system in the specified geometry. The die is a passive and weightless scalar that has no effect on the fluid. In other tutorials going forward, we'll discuss how to handle systems with non-uniform viscosities and densities. And for each scalar field, the code will automatically calculate and report the time evolution of the coefficient of variation across the fluid. This information can be used to predict blend time. In addition to the global coefficient of variation automatically calculated for the dye, we can predict the time evolution of the dye concentration at specific locations in the tank using probes. So we'll go ahead and create the top probe. Move it to the top of the tank, somewhere opposite the dye injection. We'll create the middle probe. Move it to the middle part of the tank, somewhere between the baffles. And we'll create a bottom probe too, between the baffles again. These probes will report the time evolution of the dye concentration at their specified locations, as well as other properties set by the user. Now if we press on the single phase fluid model, we can see that we are modeling a water-like fluid with a density of 1000 kilograms per meters cubed, and a kinematic viscosity of 10 to the negative 6th meters squared per second. Now you'll want to note that we are running a large eddy simulation using the default Smagorinsky coefficient of 0.1. Now if we click on the simulation menu tree, we can see that the grid spacing in the simulation is 5 millimeters, which corresponds to 1 million lattice points within the domain. Also, the current number is set to the default value of 0.1. Both of these values are the simulation defaults and will be sufficient for this model. Now, let's run the simulation. We can go to Output and Statistics. We can set to 0.05 and then set the planes in volume to 0.1. And we'll click Run and make a directory that works for you. Select the GPU you want to use and hit run. Now we can see the simulation running here in the background. The software is solving the time-dependent Navier-Stokes equations as well as the coupled time-dependent advection diffusion equation. If we go ahead and click MSTAR post, we can see that the solver will continue in the background as we post process. If we click play at the top of the screen, we can see the simulation start to spin. As we can see, it is going forward through time for what the software has processed so far. 
You may need to check in the View tab to make sure your Properties pane is active so you can adjust multiple upcoming features. The Properties pane can also snap to the other side of this window if it makes it easier for you to view. Time is increasing as we continue to advance through the simulation. We can change the color bar to make the scale go from 0 to 0 0.5 meters per second on velocity. And if we refresh the data set, we can click the play button again to show the fluid moving. If we click on the 3D button, we can transfer to 3D view. Here, we are rendering the time evolution of the three-dimensional flow field across the vessel. Now let's take a look at the time evolution of the dye concentration. We set the color bar range from 0 to 0 0.001. Now this is just showing some different frames of the simulation. We can show the dye evolving through the system. We can also look at these text files and plot the data. This graph over here shows the relative standard deviation. And if we set the y-axis minimum to 1 and click the log scale button, we can see that the blend time here is the time required for the RSD curve to plateau. The curve plateaus after around 55 seconds or so. The predicted blend time is the difference between the time required for the RSD to converge and the dye injection time. We injected at 5 seconds and it plateaued around 60 seconds, corresponding to a blend time of about 55 seconds. This blend time agrees with experimental correlation. Now we can open the probe text files as well, one by one, and see that the probe concentration data converges to a constant value after about 55 seconds of agitation. This trend is consistent with the blend time predicted from the time evolution of the global scalar field concentration, RSD. This probe data can be more useful, however, in identifying the last regions of the tank to blend. Now if we go to the moving body impeller text file and press create plot, we can see that here in the top left plot, the predicted power number is settling to a value around 5 or 6. The solver predicts this power number from the time evolution of the torque on the impeller. The temporal fluctuations in the power number are due to the turbulent nature of the flow realized in the vessel. The predicted power number is consistent with published values for fully turbulent Rushton impellers. Now going back to the solver pane, we can see that the simulation is complete with the 60 second animation. Now if we want to save the animation, we have to first go back to the 3D view tab, then go to file, save animation. We can set the frame rates to 10 frames per second, which corresponds to the value output interval of 0.1 seconds. Once it is done exporting, we can play it back. And here we see that the movie is a real-time output of the blending process and represents a real-time solution of the underlying fluid mechanics. Thanks for watching. Feel free to contact us at support at mstarcfd.com.